going to be hosted by the Minister Kubai Ngubane and dedicated to tourism as we prepare to move to level three. She is accompanied by the Director General, DG Victor Tarache. And I will at this point hand over to the Minister. Minister, you are free to come here. Thank you very much, um, DG Pumla Williams. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Following the announcement by the President of, on Sunday, 24 May 2020, that the country will be moving to the level three lockdown from the 1st of June 2020, the National Coronavirus Command Council worked on level three regulations that have already, <coughs> sorry, that have already been issued on Thursday by the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. We are here together with the Director General of the Department of Tourism to be able to explain in detail what the sector must look forward to and what are the issues that um, are relating to us. Level 3 regulations are an indication that our country has done the preparatory work to start moving towards opening up more sectors of the economy. This is because the last two months of lockdown gave us a room to build up an extensive public health response and prepare our health system for a possible increased infection rate. We must remember that government needs all of us to play our part in the fight against the pandemic. We must act responsibly and take necessary measures, such as, as advised, and that it is important for us to wash our hands or sanitize every time and hands regularly, wear a mask or face cloth, and show we keep necessary distance, whether we are in a public space or in our work environment. The past two months of lockdowns have been difficult for the tourism sector. We continued to see many businesses in the sector fighting for survival, and our projections showed that almost 600,000 jobs we're at a risk if the sector doesn't come to at least some level of operation or working by September 2020. The reality led to both government and the private sector working together to both innovate and putting protocols, protocol guidelines to get the sector back into operation. When the risk-adjusted approach was introduced, tourism was placed at level two and largely at level one. This is because our sector is largely interactive and hence our focus as both government and private sector has been in the past few weeks to ensure that we de-risk the sector and putting health protocols that can give comfort of safety, not only to government in terms of NCCC, but to our clients, including the domestic tourists. As we open up the sector, we are therefore confident that measures have been put in place to protect our employees, suppliers, tourists, and all those who are involved with the within the sector. Where there are weaknesses, as the Department of Tourism, we have committed ourselves to working towards finding solutions together with all our partners. Ladies and gentlemen, we announced as the Department of Tourism a relief fund. And this, when we announced it, was that it was meant to ensure that SMMEs in the tourism sector survive the crisis we put together the Tourism Relief Fund. The application window for the COVID-19 Tourism Relief Fund will close on the 31st of May 2020, which is tomorrow. The Tourism Relief Fund provides a once-off kept grant of 50,000 per entity as previously announced. And this is a subsidy towards expenses, um, it's a subsidy towards expenses 
such as um, operational cost, fixed costs, and all that. This we had in indicated initially that it's not subsidy, subsidy or a grant for paying off salaries because UIF is taking care of that. To date, more than 6,000 completed applications for grant assistance have been received across the country. And I'm saying completed because we did have some that are not completed with not all the forms uh, being completed. So we do not uh, count to those because if we count those, we are almost above 13,000. A large bulk of the application were from businesses that provides accommodation services. That was around 2,495 of those, followed by hospitality at 1,825, travel-related services at 1,780, and others at 662. We have received feedback in both my stakeholder engagement as I was engaging with various sectors, also through our emails, through calls, through messages, through WhatsApp, through Facebook, through Twitter, that a number of applicants had experienced challenges. And these challenges were specifically through the online system. Some had difficulties in uploading their documents onto the system. Some requested many times to submit documents that they had already submitted, and some were unable to access the system. To remedy this, we have been able to work around the clock to get most of these people who were able to not who were not able to upload their documents to be able to submit. And I do urge those who are still having documents outstanding to get onto our website and upload those documents or send them through email. The department will accept all email submissions in case you've been battling with the system. But today, since yesterday, we have been having a team that has been working, calling individual companies where we found that they have completed the forms, but you find that certain documents, other documents have been uploaded, others have not been uploaded. They've called them individually and allowed them to submit the documentation that are needed through email. And I think quite a number of our applicants who are unhappy have been uh, relieved to see such. So we are positive of the results that will be coming because indeed many of our tourism SMMEs have been looking forward to this relief. Some have already received the positive news in terms of uh, receiving confirmation that their application have been accepted. So we will announce all the application in terms of numbers, how many have been approved, how many have been not approved, and for the reasons once the closing date has been made. We don't want to communicate that currently. Another mechanism that we have been in part as we were following interaction, following my meeting with the tour guides in which they expressed their plight and how the various government departments or relief initiatives have neglected them. I went back to the department and had a discussion about what can we be can be done to assist this subsector. As you are aware, the tour guiding subsector is dominated by freelancers and independent contractors with not no job security. And for this reason, the government relief scheme, including the tourism relief fund, did not cover them. In response to this, as the department, we have come up with an additional financial relief mechanism for tourism guides. We have set aside a total of 30 million rands, which will provide financial relief over a period of two to three months of the, for the tourist guide. The beneficiary of this scheme will include tour guides who are registered with the registrar in terms of the Tourism Act and tour guides who are not employed by any company and those that have not formed their own companies, which means that they are freelancers or independent contractors without job security. This was meant because many of them do not even qualify to receive UIF because they are not employed by any company. So this relief will come a long way. They had appealed to me as the minister together with the team when we met with them to provide for this relief. As they also prepare themselves for the sector reopening, they too would require to adhere to the necessary protocol for containment of the spread of the virus. In this regard, we shall also be making further provision to ensure that they also receive 
personal protective equipment and will this will ensure that they are able to do their work properly because once we come back to activities where leisure travel is allowed the tour guides who will be taking us to various tourism destination will need to be in terms of the health protocol compliant and noting that these are people who do not have job security who have not had income in the previous months and all nothing that would have assisted them to be able to operate will assist will be able to come through in support for them to provide to those ppes now coming to what has been announced in terms of level three we believe that the tourism sector should be at the forefront of deploying solutions focused on safety, sanitizing methods, and early detention to be used by tourists and tourism employees alike. From my engagement as a sector and having had insights into the extent of creativity and innovation in the sector's containment effort in line with the risk-adjusted approach, I'm encouraged that our approach is not only just planning, for moving from level one, from one level alert to the next, but seriously internalizing the notion of the new normal as a sector. Tourism service support, sorry, tourism services supports other economic sectors. As part of the economy, as part of the economy opening up, the tourism activities that are supportive have to reopen. As some strategic sectors of the economy will, have to, will need to operate during lockdown, such sectors will need tourism services even before the sector is fully opened for leisure. This includes key elements that would facilitate travel of persons for permitted purposes. We therefore welcome the decision by Cabinet to permit tourism services for the categories as stated in the gazetted regulation. I will now highlight the areas that have been opened up for Level 3. Restaurants are open for delivery, collection and drive through This includes the side cab where you arrive, especially those of restaurants in the township who do not have facilities to be able to do drive throughs and all that. So you're saying you arrive, you park, if you are driving, and then you are given, you are ordering, and then you are given either a number or some level of indication that by 10 minutes you will receive your order. So you don't gather inside, you don't gather as a group outside the restaurant, do a queue. If you do a queue, make sure that you distance. You keep safe distancing like we see in malls, like we see in retailers. That's what we are expecting from the tourism side. So those restaurants as well that have liquor license will be allowed to provide to sell liquor for takeaways. On-site consumption is not allowed for both alcohol and also for the food. So we can come together in a restaurant and sit and eat. In this area, I do note that there's been an outcry in the public domain to allow the restaurants to be able to have a sit-in. We are currently putting together another submission as the Department of Tourism to go to, through NetJoint and, and CCCC to propose further measures for this. Once NCCC has considered, we will be able to, cons to make pronouncements. Under professional services in the regulations, we will be able to allow professional services and businesses to operate in the tourism sector as the minister responsible for the sector. This will include tourist guides, tour operators, travel agents, tourism information officers are allowed to come into operation during level three. Again, just to indicate under professional services will include trainings that do not require mass gathering. So these are, for example, you'd have training for nature guides, which allow safe distances and also being able to observe protocols. So such trainings will come back to be able to assist the sector to come to life. Public and private game farms have been opened for self-drive, Excursions. This means many of us will be aware that in nature reserve, for example, if you go to Kruger National Park, you are either able to join a group of tours or you can do a self-drive. So currently group tours are not allowed. So you are allowed to come with your car, pay at the gate 
enter Kruka National Park as an example, and you drive through, you do an excursion within your own province. Hiking is allowed to be done in compliance with the exercising guidelines, meaning you are not allowed to do the hiking in groups. Under accommodation, accommodation activities are all allowed except for leisure. All establishment, establishment will note that since level five, you have been required to request a letter from the Minister of Tourism to operate so that you can be able to accommodate essential services or become a quarantine. Currently, in terms of permitted services, meaning in business trips, if I as the minister travel into KZN for business traveler as a person who is part of essential services, I am allowed to be accommodated. So that means our hot accommodation facilities, our hotels, our BNBs, our guest lodges are operational under level one with effect of the 1st of June. We are not required to have letters from Minister of Tourism. What you are going to be required is to keep a list, ensure that people who are coming are not coming into an establishment for leisure purposes. You have to be able to be accountable as an owner of the facility when inspection comes. We will be doing inspection as the Department of Tourism. I know that many people have been confused. You are not required to get any certificate from anyone. We are saying in terms of accommodation, you are allowed to operate. You are not allowed to accommodate for leisure services, only for businesses, permitted services. For quarantine, we continue to follow the guidelines of Department of Health. You will have to have a letter and together approved by Health Department for being a quarantine site. As quarantine, conditions do not change. For accommodation in terms of other issues, in terms of permitted and businesses, that's where the conditions have changed. So with effect of the first, no need to request a letter. You have to keep the records. You have to read what we are saying in terms of the guidelines that we'll be issuing and the protocols that we have agreed between ourselves and you as a sector. So we're expecting you to keep to those protocols that we have agreed to. Hunting activities are allowed during level three. The following economic activities remain prohibited. Conferencing events and entertainment activities, such as festival, remains prohibited. We do note that in terms of conference facilities, such as your ICC, some of them have been converted to assist in terms of COVID-19 pandemic fight. Those will continue to be permitted. And those who are providing in terms of a facility for social relief platforms, such as distribution of food parcel and all that, those facilities are allowed to continue with the work in support of the fight against COVID-19. Casinos at level three are not yet permitted. Leisure travel, as I said, is not permitted. So interprovincial movement will be allowed, but not for leisure. So just to come into tourism-related services, because we are already affected by other sectors, just to indicate so that our sector and those who are able to provide support for this can be in detail understand what is happening. We welcome the opening of domestic commercial flights, which have been opened for business travel for now, as part of interprovincial movement and as announced by Elia, by Minister Mbalula. The tourism sector will benefit immensely from this step as travel is an integral part of tourism. Car rentals are a critical enabler of tourism and movement of people and are encouraged. We are encouraged by them coming to full operation during level three. We also welcome the fact that those approved to travel are allowed to use long distance uh, public transport to do so within since the 1st of June. This meaning as part of interprovincial movement or travel. And also the subsectors such as accommodation and restaurants will greatly benefit out of these services and out of this movement of permitted and businesses across the country. The opening up of hunting will also be a big boost to the tourism sector. The hunting industry 
contributes an estimated 2 billion direct spending annually to the tourism sector and it is all it also contributes to employment in the rural areas so this is an important step towards the recovery of the sector we have developed directions for the tourism sector to either enhance or provide further clarity on the existing regulation issued to limit the spread of the virus and in a manner that they can be adaptable in a rapidly changing context. We support a responsible approach by the sector in coming up with innovative ways to prevent the spread of the virus. However, all protocols should be accessible and not prevented, preventative to smaller players in the sector. In this regard, I welcome containment measures by the industry, particularly the big players, to provide support to small players through training and other means to ensure sector-wide compliance. We have started with our recovery and the vision for the future of tourism in the country. We have continuously been in consultation with the entire sector since the declaration of the state of disaster and the commencement of the lockdown to ensure our sector survives beyond COVID-19. We have already engaged on the adjusted levels for the proposed inclusion of certain tourism operation and services. We are doing all, our, all in our powers to cushion the sector and mitigate against any potential job losses. Government also appreciate the support from the sector in making available some of the facilities for use as quarantine sites and the commitment to do more. All of the major players in the tourism sector, including product owners and tourism association, are encouraged to continue to engage in order to develop a response that is measured and consistent, proportionate to the public health threat, and based on local risk assessment involving every part of the tourism value chain. Last week, the president held discussions with the tourism sector regarding the challenges and hardships of this sector's of this sector as we are currently experiencing. They have made several proposals regarding the measures they intend to implement when their sectors open. All input received are being given due consideration. More importantly, there was a commitment by government led by the president and the private sector to work towards getting more tourism activities into enhanced level three or level three if others would be able to say, the more as we work and towards level two and level one. This means that our sector still has an opportunity for opening up more subsectors at level three. We are working closely with the sector to develop the necessary protocols and guidelines to ensure that this becomes a reality. We strongly believe that the tourism sector will recover and grow beyond the levels it achieved before the crisis. I have tasked the SAT CEO with driving the process of developing a draft tourism recovery plan for South Africa. As part of this process, SAT has been convening weekly webinars with various tourism stakeholders to get their inputs on the post-COVID-19 tourism sector. SAT and the department has also been receiving written submission from South Africans across the country, and we want to see our sector getting back to the growth trajectory. I've also convened meetings and held multiple conversations with the private sector from large businesses to small businesses, youth-run organizations and women-run businesses, including those in rural areas and townships to get their input for the recovery plan. We want our plan to be re reflective of the views of the industry players at all levels, but more importantly, we want to ensure that the tourism sector recovery is inclusive. Based on the COVID-19 epidem epidemic expected tragedy, the first phase of recovery for the sector will be driven by domestic tourism, followed by the regional tourism and international tourism. Although we will be gradually opening up the sector in the coming months, depending on how the virus is spread, we expect that the sector will only fully recover towards the end of this year. We have a beautiful country that will still be beautiful after the COVID-19 pandemic. Post-COVID-19, people will still yearn to visit beautiful places and create memories, memorable moments with their loved ones. We have plans in place to, as soon as the world begins to open up, 
to resume marketing our country and rebuilding our brand. As I conclude, as government, we continue to spearhead the plan for tourism's ability to be a catalyst for the economic recovery, to work faster in a coordinated manner to ensure that the sector recovery meets its national developmental objectives. We remain committed to work tirelessly to safeguard our tourism industry, and this we will will need to heighten corporations and partnership as we implement our response plan and lay a foundation for a healthier and more resilient future. We remain tourism strong. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. We will now entertain questions, and I'll start with uh, Ishmael, your line. Ishmael. Thank, thank you, DG. We don't have callers at the moment. Thank you. Never. Your WhatsApp line. Nothing yet, DG. You. <laughs> Minister, you've done a good job. <laughs> so I, I, I don't think we are going to be keeping Minister any longer if there are uh, no questions. Thank you. We adjourn. Thank you. Brilliant.